Hello, all of you vain, gloriously wonderful people. This is the Emperor ETR-1, and I'm about to find out if it'll off-road. This is the second most voted for vehicle this week, coming in with five votes. You can vote for the vehicles that you want to see by clicking on the link in the description down below. Starting next week, we will uh, have a whole fresh batch of cars and, well, I should say vehicles, because uh, there's some odd, odd things coming up over the next few weeks. Uh, this is the last week of stuff that I recorded well over a month ago. And, well, now I have about another three weeks worth of stuff already recorded. But we're going to see much bigger voting numbers coming soon. And, of course, you can always vote for the vehicles you want to see. Vote as many times as you want. And as I say every time, I've got a big long list there of all the vehicles that I currently own that have not been tested. Uh, but at the very bottom, there's a place for you to select other. And you can write in vehicles there. Uh, so anything in the game, if I can get it to this mountain, well then, I will test it. It doesn't matter what it is. Trust me, there's some interesting things coming next week. Okay, you know what? Here's just a little teaser. Clown van. Anyway, so the Emperor ETR-1 supercar. One of my favorite supercars, in fact. I, I like the looks of it. I like the sound of it. I like how I have mine designed. I think it's a beautiful car. Um, I love the way it drives. I love the way it handles. There's not much about this car I don't like. Um, the only difficulty I have with it in off-roading is it is a rear-wheel drive only supercar. Therefore, with all the power that it has, it wants to spin its rear wheels. But throttle control is the name of the game when that happens. And you just got to be careful with what you're doing. If you get too heavy on the throttle on the dirt, of course, you know, as you go around a bend, the back end will come around on you. So I'm just taking it easy on the throttle while still trying to push hard. Remember, uh, several weeks ago, I, I decided to make the change. That I was going to push these cars right up to where I know their limit to be so that we get better times and see how they really perform at their fastest. I mean, yeah, I could be much more cautious and go a lot slower, but I do take a lot more risks just to try to get better times. Sometimes that backfires, and they wind up with worse times because of it. But for the most part, it works fine, and it's working fine with the ETR-1. There's only one other Emperor in the game that I know of, at least for the manufacturer Emperor. There's the Albany Emperor. Well, well that's an Albany. But there's the Emperor Habanero that we've all come to hate because every time we get in one, Simeon wants it. We get a piece where I want a bubble. Fuck you, Simeon. But uh, this is the only other one, and it's supposed to be kind of like the in-game Lexus, essentially. So for you Lexus lovers out there, you want to park a Lexus in your GTA garage because, well, some shit YouTuber that clickbaits all the time owns one. Well, you can have one by getting the ETR-1 or the Habanero. Oh, big bump there on the rocks. Of course, it sits really low to the ground. But we are up. Two minutes, 57 seconds. Will the ETR-1 off-road? Yes, it will. Making it the sixth quickest supercar up Mount Chiliad. Of course, it is a full 16 seconds below the current leader, the X80 Proto as I get $2,000 for being a good boy. We now have to take the ETR-1 back down the mountain, and this is where, well, first of all, me not being able to drive a fucking car comes into play, and I managed to hit the observation deck. But this is where the car's lightweight, as usual, will come into play, because uh, it will want to try to get airborne. Lightweight cars love, love to fly. Right there is a perfect example of it. Because of that, you have to keep the speed down, in fact, I believe that it takes me a little bit longer to get down the mountain with this car than it does the next vehicle we're going to look at, which is in the off-roads class. I think it takes a second or two less to get that one down. But I love the sound of this thing under engine braking. The engine makes a beautiful, beautiful noise. It kind of snarls at you like, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go, push the gas pedal. But I uh, can't do that because we'll go flying off the mountain. Very composed, though. It is surprisingly, surprisingly composed in the dirt. Even over that uneven bit, you can see no big drama at all. Coming up here to our first little jump, and no drama at all till I land, and the lightweight kind of bounced me around a little bit. But I am getting a little more confident. I've never really off-roaded before this with this car, so uh, 
It took me a second to find my bearings, but now that I've got them, I'm getting a little bit more pushy, and there it cost me just a little bit. Let's see if we can get a hiker. Oh, it's just Mister. I scared the shit out of her though, so that's okay. As long as I ruin the hiker's day, I feel it's successful. Oh, will it off-road video? And we ruin lots of hikers' days in this one. You'll see. Back in, getting a little wiggly on me there. Had to get it back under control for our big jump here. A little sideways, but easy enough to correct. And a beautiful, beautiful landing back there. That was just perfect. Coming down to our final little bit of a uh, big downhill descent. Before we make our final push off the last little tiny dirt trail here. Went a little wide, so I had a little bit too much speed. Letting the engine just slow it down instead of getting too hard on the brakes. Around the bend of the tree of mini crashes. Things are going quite well for the Emperor ETR1. This has been an absolutely enjoyable run. Now that we're back down on the ground where that grip really comes into play, should be doing a lot better. And I recorded this before gun running came out and they nerfed uh, the downforce. So... I almost want to retest it, but eh, whatever. We're down in 2 minutes, 37 seconds. So, let's go back to the top of Mount Chiliad, where uh, there's a barricade in our way. Throw it off the side of the mountain and uh, see what type of damage this car can uh, take. Which, since it is uh, a newer vehicle, again, I know I say it a lot, but there's not much in the way of damage models for this car. So, body panels don't dent, they just fall off once they're damaged enough. Got a little stuck going backwards here. Trying to get turned around didn't work, so I decided, fuck it, I'll go backwards. But then the car hit its tail and decided to go frontwards. Anyways, that massive spoiler is a bit of a liability. Because it will want to get hung up on things now and then. Oh, big, big flip there. Nearly lost the right door twice so far. It looks like the hood may be in danger of coming off as well. Surprisingly, I don't see too much in the way of uh, broken lights, despite how hard this car has hit, both on its front and its back. I I don't see... Yeah, it looks like they're intact. You can't see the front of it, of course, to know. But uh, we'll try to get a glance at it here next time it spins around, if it does. Right there. Oh, for a second, we got a glance, and it looks like the lights were intact on our roof. But it flipped over, and for some reason, there goes the hood. Odd place for the hood to fall off, but whatever. Through our first little tunnel, spinning around. Again, the lightweight, all the lightweight cars just really bounce around on quite a bit in this area. There's just not a lot you can do about it because on the damage descent, unlike the original ascent and the control descent, I just go full out, balls to the wall, full throttle, and just push it as hard as it'll go. Oh, into the wood pile. But we are down. One minute. 38 seconds. Let's take a look at the damage, which isn't much. The windshield and right window are gone. The hood's gone. The doors won't close, and, uh, well, there's a bit of dirt. But hey, that brings us to our next vehicle the Karen Rusty Rebel. And my character's clearly excited to be in there. Look at him rocking out inside of the truck. This, uh, technically didn't get any votes, but. The regular Rebel got six votes, but I've already tested that one a long time ago. So I decided we'd put the uh, Rusty Rebel through its paces instead. Which, the Rusty Rebel... God, I love this truck. This very truck that you're looking at, with the exact same passenger who's with me right now, my buddy Rocket. We drove this truck one night, full throttle... Front end into the train. Head on collision. Nearly a dozen times before it was destroyed. And even then it didn't blow up. No, 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 no. The Rusty Rebel's too tough for that. It just had a bit of fire in the engine and then went out and was dead. That's it. Never blew up. It was amazing. It, I've not been able to repeat that in this truck. I think my second highest number of times hit the train head on was six after that but one night we got to like 11 or 12 times before it finally died of course a very capable off-roader it is a lightweight truck with a really high suspension so it does want to bounce around a bit so you got to keep that in mind uh and because it does have quite a bit of power the wheels will want to spin on you so you do have to pay attention to your throttle and to where you're headed but if you do those two things 
there's pretty much nowhere that this truck can't reach. So, did I get that sentence right? I think so. And if not, you know what I meant. But I love the Rusty Rebel. Absolutely one of my favorite trucks in the game. I, I feel very close to it. It holds a dear spot in my heart. Not quite enough to get my top five favorite cars. You guys probably saw in my Q&A video uh, not too long ago. But still, it's got it's somewhere in my top ten for sure. Love me a Rusty Rebel. Absolutely love it. And it's a shame that they had to besmirch its its reputation by releasing the new technical custom based on the same platform. Even though they got rid of the rust, it's still a matte color. And well, how dare you, Rockstar? Anyways, no big drama from the Rebel. It just makes its way up the mountain as if it was on any other type of terrain. It doesn't really matter where you're pointing at as long as you don't get it in too deep of water. It will just go and go and go. Though I have had this thing uh, fully submerged under the water, above the roof, and because I had enough speed, it pushed right through and never died. It's kind of impressive, actually. Oh, hikers! Oh, hiker down and a wanted level for it. That's how the day should go for a hiker. Because they're on my trail, damn it. This is the Vainglorious Trail, by the way. Bruffy has his island. You know what? I have a whole goddamn motherfucking mountain. I know they call it Mount Chiliad, but it's really Mount Vainglorious. That's right. I claim this mountain in the name of the Vainglorious. I'm just being goofy. It's like 1130 at night and I'm really tired. Anyway, last big push here is a moving target vehicle becomes available. Look at that. No drama whatsoever. Just right up the side of that hill. Up and over the big rocks into two hikers. The rebel doesn't want to stop. But will it off-road? <laughs> oh my god, yes. Yes, it will. I was struggling to get that thing to just stop because it was high-centered on a hiker. Anyways, that means we now have to do a control descent with Commander Hobo waiting in his wonderful Meriwether Mesa. And I believe the V-Boss is just off to the side in another Rebel. Don't know if it's a Rusty Rebel or not. I don't remember, honestly. When I was editing the video, I saw it uh, in the the bit I edit out, just because there's always a bunch that I edit out. But I uh, don't remember exactly which one V-Boss is in. If he stays put, we might get to see here in a minute. Looks like he might be off to the side of the mountain, though, so we might not get a peek at V-Boss. Might be a little too high up. Yeah, he's a little too high up for us to see. I think he was in a Rusty Rebel as well. Just trying to keep my speed down because, again, lightweight truck equals bouncy bouncy. Not the kind Trevor gets. So, I gotta be careful so that it doesn't bounce over one of these bumps and go flying off the side of the mountain. Uh, I will get some speed up once we get off this more narrow bit and things become a little bit wider and have a bigger room uh, for a margin of error. But for now, I'm just taking it easy and a beautiful sunset going down Mount Chiliad. Just letting the truck kind of find its way down here. Commander's right on my tail, though. He's showing off in his Mesa. I love the Mesa, too. It's a lot of fun. I've had one since I was like a level 2 or 3 when somebody called Merriweather on me, thinking, haha, it'd be fun to call Merriweather on the newbie. Well, that's why the license plate on my Merriweather Mesa says earned. I killed every one of those Merriweather bitches with a pistol, the first pistol the game gives you, and then, uh,. Claim the Jeep for my own. There we go. The bounciness finally bit us in the ass. Rolled it over, but look at that. The Rebel just keeps on going. Got to turn around, though. There we go. And despite that, I think this still gets a better downhill time than the ETR-1. Can't really remember, honestly, what the ETR-1 got. That was, you know, like five minutes ago. And who can remember those things? I'm sure just one of you could uh, click back in the video and be like, No, Vernon, you were wrong. And even if I was, oh well. Look at that. Rebel is just a champ at off-roading. Just handles everything you throw at it. Bouncing all around, but still easy to keep under control. As long as it doesn't roll over on you. The Rebel does like to roll over. Both of them do. Even if you lower the suspension, it's still a really top-heavy short wheelbase truck. So it will want to roll over on you quite a bit. Oh, V-Boss is just off camera again, so we don't get another... Or get a chance to look at his truck. 
I really do think he was in a rebel, though. He may have changed vehicles by the time I got to the top of the mountain. Whoa! Back in, trying to get away from me. I managed to correct it, though. Pushing down on the last bit of asphalt. What's an off-roader doing on a road? Coming around to our stop. Get a little sideways, but we're down. Two minutes, 59 seconds, so take that back. Probably not as quick as the ETR one. But we're back at the top of Mount Chiliad to throw the Rebel off the side and see what's what. Of course, uh, since this car has, or truck, has been in the game since the game launched, it does have damage models. So we should see uh, some massive body da uh, damage going on this. This panel should just deform to a lovely, lovely degree. Still not to the extent that you see in, like, you know, GTA 4 and earlier games, but still enough that... We should have, you know, some nice, satisfying crunches to look at. Whoa, something just blew up. Don't know who that was, because it didn't say somebody died. So, uh, not sure what just happened there. Oh, big hit into the boulder. Lots of sparks flying off. Yeah, I really have no idea who, what, blew up. Oh, I bet it was V-Boss's vehicle. If you look, there he is parachuting. Okay, so it was V-Boss's vehicle. Oh! Another big hit on a rock. We lost the fender somewhere. I didn't even see it come off. Front end taking a ton of damage, though, as we roll over, because why not? Makes it more fun. There we go. Push it forward to say hello to the train. Lovely jump right into the tunnel. That was textbook. That's how it should go. Almost nailed another one, but the bed got stuck on that one. Through our bumpy, muddy bits. One of the few times I've actually been able to get that sentence right. And I guess we'll go backwards through this tunnel because, you know, why not? A little bit of a handbrake J turn there. Coming up. By the wood pile. Back in comes around and we managed to hit the smaller wood pile and send it all rolling. But we are down. One minute, 38 seconds. Let's take a look at the damage on the Rusty Rebel. Uh, all the windows and lights are gone. The right front fender's gone. It has some bent wheels and some pretty significant body damage. Hey, guys, don't forget to go vote for the vehicles that you want to see by clicking on the link in the description down below. And until next time, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay vainglorious.